one. Hey guys, welcome back to the Movie Project. So today we're going to talk about the IT band. Um, a lot of people talk about IT band syndrome. That's kind of like me saying I have leg syndrome. All right, it usually just is implying that you have inflammation, and a lot of times it's happening right here down the lateral side of the knee. And so the IT band starts up here. My TFL and my glute come together and form this big connective tissue, and then start down by the knee. All right, it's a big, thick band of tissue, and so you're kind of naive to think that you're going to stretch that tissue. You're probably not, all right? It's really thick, it's connective, it's not a muscle. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about what we can do to kind of create some slack in that um, tissue, and then also what we can do to prevent inflammation and to kind of help you out and make sure that you don't get IC band syndrome, all right? Um, so first, let's talk about how we can gain some slack. Not a lot different than most times when we're talking about muscle groups, we're going to work on some myofascial release. So since it starts up by the hip, I'm going to go ahead and put it on the lateral side of my hip, all right, work in any tight corners that I can find, and I'm going to take the method or the approach of pancaking into it. So I'm going to kind of create that or restore that sliding surface and try to smash into it side to side. Again, just like any other time you feel a really tender spot, try to breathe into it. And so you're kind of creating that elasticity. We're going from one big knot to hopefully restore. Okay, restoring that sliding surface. All right, so smashing into the side. You can also take it down by the knee, all right? If you feel a lot of tightness, the quads, the lateral hamstring, everything plays into the IT band because it's all connected. So I can take it all the way down by the knee. And I can smash, spin, get posterior and anterior. Okay, the IT band creates an anterior and posterior compartment. So I want to make sure that I get all that tissue. And when I'm feeling those tender spots, again, that's where you want to spend all the time, right? Because you can feel it when it's really tight. So that's homework number one. The next thing that you can do to restore range of motion is work on that hip capsule. So you're going to find yourself a box. Mine's kind of high. If you're not quite as mobile, get one that's about hip height or even a little bit lower. I'm going to just work into extra rotation of my hip and I'm going to try to drive my femur to the inside socket to restore some space there on the lateral end. So I'm going to open up my hip and breathe into as much extra rotation as I can. All right, so I'm kind of restoring. I'm pressing my weight to the left and driving my knee out to the right. When I get done there, I have to work on that lateral hamstring, so I'm going to internally rotate from my hip, reach as far down towards that heel as I can, kind of add some rotation, and that can get oof, down the outside there of that whole posterior chain, kind of focusing on the outside of the hamstrings, which is going to hit the IT band because, again, it's all connected. There's that posterior and anterior compartment. Um, that's how we can restore some slack. We can kind of get a little bit more range of motion. As far as IT band syndrome goes, a lot of times that happens from running. So you're not going to want to just analyze that IT band. You're not going to want to stretch it. You're going to want to analyze the way that you're running. Okay. Typically, like I always say, when we run, if we have our feet turning out, our knees are caving in, and our IT band is having to rub anteriorly and posteriorly against our femur, and that's where a lot of that inflammation. Um, comes from is that attraction, that friction that happens on the femur, and then you feel it down by your knee. So, first of all, fix your gait, okay? So, if you're having that problem, you're going to want to focus on keeping the toes straight, all right? After that, is there any kind of midline fault? So, are you doing one of these, you know? Are you getting real tired and you're kind of uh, hunching over and you're getting real rounded and really rotating your shoulders and getting a lot of thoracic flexion? If so, that's another thing to focus on. Get good posture. Maybe go back to some interval runs so that you only go as far as you can with good posture, take a rest, and then go again as far as you can with good posture, take a rest. Because a lot of times that's really the underlying issue. And then lastly, if you do have a lot of inflammation and you have a lot of pain, what you can do, fish oil, ice it, you know, give it some rest. Take some time away from the running, take some time away from that intensity and do body weight. Um, conditioning, maybe jump rope works for you, but a lot of times it's the way that we're running that's causing the problem. So stick to the basics, take some rest, and uh, for prevention, do some of this myofascial and some of this mobility stuff. All right, good luck.